Hello and welcome back everyone. We have Doug here with American Battery Metals. American Battery Metals is an American owned advanced extraction and battery recycling technology company with extensive mineral resources in Nevada. All right, Doug, the show, the floor is yours. Welcome everybody. I don't know if you, any of you met me before in the past, but I've been on a couple of these LD micros in the last few years, uh, but not last year. So anyway, welcome. Hope it's not too early for you. So we're a we, American Battery Technology Company, and that's we're changing our name to that as we speak. That'll be effective sometime in January. Um, is a, it is as as she said is a, is a extraction and recycling technology company. We've got a clean a clean technology platform. It's very very green. Um, our platform is probably the the first one we know of that doesn't melt products, doesn't melt batteries, and so forth. We're, we're completely a closed loop system. Um, our clean technology platform basically increases production of primary metals used in batteries. So today, when you get a, when a battery goes back and recycles, it gets, it gets melted. Our, our technology takes it and keeps it completely intact, intact and turns it right back into a fully functional battery. So it's a, it's a really, really interesting technology, but I'll talk to you about it today. It's all part of our uh, uh, circular technology circular economy basically for battery metals that champions ethical environmentally sustainable sourcing and that's a that's a huge that's a huge thing for us we'll in the future we're going to be able to change the way uh, mining is done we're definitely changing the way recycling is done with our green technology and we'll talk about it now so um we have five operating principles secure supply chains big big thing for us addressing climate change very big for us, empowering people in place around the United States and around the globe, greening the industry. This is not a green industry. We can green it and we can show you. We can actually show you today. And we're, we're evolving all sorts of uh, regulatory frameworks to enable the innovation. For instance, we're working with the US government right now in language that will get all critical minerals uh, to be bought from a US company uh, and a green US company on top of that. And that's very important. And, and the COVID just, just explained all that, shows, shows us that. So one second. Three key problems, basically. There's a limited supply of battery materials. We all hear that lithium's short. We all know that lithium is only a very small part of these batteries. The biggest part of these batteries are nickel, cobalt, manganese, then lithium, and then, and then num numerous other uh, products are in there too. So we fully extract everything. Um, there are, there's no viable recycling industry for lithium at this point. Last year, there was 100,000 tons in the world that was recycled. That represented 4% of the market. Uh, available market. Just so you know, 100,000 tons is about worth about a billion dollars in industry at this point in time. Our first plant's going to be 20,000 ton commercial plant, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But again, there's a limited supply of these materials. There's no viable recycling, and there's supply chain risk. Everybody's been relying on foreign companies, foreign countries, and companies to supply this to the United States. We got to stop. So, and they're not green. Um, our technology, basically, our team, we brought in, I have like seven people now from Tesla, uh, a very, very solid CTO and Ryan Meltzer. Uh, the, his whole team designed the batteries, learned how to manufacture batteries, and knew how to demanufacture the batteries. And that's our, and that's our specialty. We know how they're built, and we know how to take them apart, and we do it all in a three-hour process and get them right back into the supply chain. So that's very, very key for us. So... Um, this is a comparison basically of all how, how recycling is done today. It's basically, to, no matter what it is, it's all melted or put back into, the, in, into bad spots around the world. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of all these bad things that go on. Our, th our system is totally clean. You can actually just put the box down on the ground almost and it will recycle everything. It doesn't take anything from the environment, doesn't hurt anything. And, and we'll be able to show and prove that. And then this is basically our process at the end. And basically we take everything, we send it right through our zero waste proprietary system, run it back out again. And in three hours, we're selling it right back in the supply chain. We say the battery manufacturers, just so I understand the cathode companies are the people that actually get that to the battery people. Those are the BASS of the world and the DuPonts and the Dow chemicals. And, and you know, we're tight with all those guys. So in, in closing, before we get to questions, I think there's a, there's a few important things I think you need to understand about that. There's five reasons why we are going to be successful. Five major reasons. We got a great team. We got great trade secrets. We have super relationships with all the cathode companies in the world. 
We have very good relationship with the U.S. government, and we're in a great state in Nevada, which is, has is just been the most supportive people in the world. In fact, last week, the governor uh, personally said, welcome to Nevada, Doug, which was a great thing. So having said that, um, I'm more than happy to talk, uh, answer any questions. I, I did the short deck for this for this reason, so I'll leave it to questions. All right, we will now start the Q&A. Hey. Hey, Doug. Um, hey, it's Steve. Hey, Steve. Just, just a question. You know, um, on, on the li lithium production, I guess, it, it, why has, uh, just for starters, what, why has it been, I mean, I, I read some high figure, like, you know, 95 some odd percent has come from outside this country. And wh why is that? Is it, is it that the cost has been so much more beneficial? I mean, why has it been that way? If well, we have you know, Albemarle is one of the greatest producers of this product, and they're based in the U.S., and a lot of their stuff comes from overseas, but a lot of their stuff comes from the U.S., but only 1% of all lithium that was sold, used in the United States last year, came from the United States. That's that's the number that we have. That's what we've gotten so far. So that's a big number. But here, let me give you a couple numbers. 100,000 tons recycled last year. 30 million tons are going to be recycled in 2030. 100,000 tons is about equal to about a billion dollars in, in revenue, uh, it's dividing the materials all the way up. If you just melt it, it's worth about, oh, it'd probably be worth about 30% oh, of that, basically. It'd be worth about 30%. That's what the smelters, smelters do. Another big number that's really important is the Tesla plant, and I'm sure you guys are following batteries. You know that's the largest building in the world. There are 170 of those plants being built today in the world, 170. Some are much bigger. 65% of them are all in China. So that's a big thing. So most of these products, what people don't realize is most of this lithium and related products have come out of uh, bad areas. Just, you know, if you go to Peru right now, you can see it's really, it's bad. They're up at 13,000 feet. They've ruined the landscape. It's, it's gone. When you, when you do what, what, um, what a lot of people do, just drying this like we do in China, it nukes the ground. That ground's no good for a hundred years. People don't eat. They can't drink water. It's, it's a bad situation. We don't do that. So I hope that answers your question. Hey Doug, hi Eric. Uh, I, you 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 kind of went in and out when you were mentioning the Tesla employees that you had. Did you say seven, seventeen, or seventy? Seven, seven. Okay. Seven. I only have I only have uh, fourteen employees today. Okay. Contract. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. I just want to make sure. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't completely understand your recycling process. Is it more of a uh, mechanical process, or is it more of a uh, human? labor intensive type process right no, now. it's mechanical it's not it's not labor intensive we'll be able to process 20,000 tons a year uh, at, at this facility with, with shifts of about seven people Bas the the first interaction is when you dump the material into our bin then it, after that it's never talked to, never touched again until it comes out at the end so it's it's a no. very very limited it's not high burning at all it's not a burning at all it's all it's all a closed loop system it's all trade secreted uh, but we t we take out we we separate each metal all by itself during that three hours. So some sort of a dissolving process or something close. Something Sorry close. To interrupt. There's no there's no there's no, we, we use some chemicals. We use some chemicals, but but nothing nothing. That we're we're in the middle of getting our permits right now with the with the state and so forth. So we've happened to show all this and everything's good. It's 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 really universal waste. It's not a very high heavy waste. You prepare for a fire when you're building the plants and so forth, because you just never know. So, but did that help you with that? You, I know you want to know into the, the down deep on it, but um, it's no, a- No, that, 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 that does help. And this is, so it's all proprietary and how is that protected? We're protecting it through trade secrets. And we also have some patents that we're doing, but those are follow on patents. All of our, our nine extraction recycling uh, technologies are all trade secrets. Okay. So, Looking forward five years from now, do you, are you going to be more of a recycling company or more of a resource? Company? So we're, we're, we're playing the USA card really big. That's a big thing for us. We, we intend to actually have five or six of these plants throughout the United States within five years. We're saying the next big plant will be a 200,000 ton plant. That'll be somewhere in a, in a logical area around the United States. There's places, you know, Texas, Southern California, Georgia, Tennessee, Michigan, Ohio. That would be natural for this because there's other similar plants being built around there not recycling plants but other uh, battery plants and so forth the automobile industry is huge for us 
you'll see the DOE, you'll see the D Department of Defense, the Department of Energy and the Department of Transportation helping us. We've been working really hard over the last two years to, to get that going. That doesn't happen overnight. Of course, with the administration change, it really didn't matter to us. It doesn't matter to us. Actually, it looks better with, with, with the new administration coming in from a green standpoint, but is that this is a very solid business. Once this plant's up and running, it'll run for 50 years. Um, it'll do 20,000 tons. And last, if you, if you did took last 12 months on commodity prices, it would have done 200 million in a top line revenue, just in a, in a commercial pilot plant. The bigger plant, 200,000 tons, that's $2 billion in top line revenue. So it's, it's a huge business and it's embryonic at this phase, totally embryonic. Are the performance characteristic of a battery that is manufactured with recycled components similar to those that are manufactured with fresh out of the ground components? Um, well, it's still ends up being still the same uh, product at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, what who uh, a somebody like a BASF or a Dow Chemical or DuPont, they battery certify that material. So let's just put it this way. Stuff comes out of the ground right now that's raw. Lithium, let's just say, it could be $7,000 a ton. If it's battery grade material, you're looking at $15,000 a ton. We will only deliver battery grade material. The key thing for us, though, is if we take back a battery that was made in China or wherever it was made, we can actually clean it out. It will never look have anything to do with China anymore. We'll have totally clean that and re-energize that material. So that's, a, that's another great thing for us as well. So, How much of the battery is recyclable? 100%. Wow. There's yeah. copper, there's aluminum, there's paper. There is some waste, but there's no environmental waste at all. But there is just, there's a tiny bit of waste. And, and you'll be able to, once the plant starts getting built here now, you'll be able to see it get built. And then there'll be some cameras on the building. You'll actually see the process going. We're not gonna show you the trade secrets, but we'll be able, you'll be able to actually see it go in and watch it in three hours and have it come out again. We wanna prove to the world we're real from that standpoint, so. All right, last one from me. Uh, do you have any estimate uh, as to the percentage of cars now that are operating with recycled materials in their batteries? No, I can't give you a good figure. It's all over the board. If you there's seven or eight different companies, you can look. Goldman has reports, UBS has reports, Benchmark has reports, uh, the DOE has reports. <coughs> some of the some of the car manufacturers, it's all over the board. Do we and you know they? Everybody says everything's got to be by 2050 electric by 2030 X this, by 2035, but they're all, they're all, it's all over the board. However, the number that you should look at, Eric, 171 of these plants being built. That's, that tells it all as far as EVs and 65% in, in China. That's a big, big number. I mean, you're talking, you know, trillions of dollars, a, tr a couple trillion dollars there in plants, I believe. Yeah, interesting, I thanks. My math. Sure. Hey, Doug, this is Chad. Just like a couple of quick questions. Um, sure, Chad. So I guess the, the first one, just in terms of moving from, you know, kind of design to an actual plant that can process 20,000 tons, I think reference the first one is no small feat, right? And um, so, so give us confidence that you, that the plant can, you know, operate at that capacity. Um, how have you kind of, you know, accomplished that? Well, so we brought, we brought in a couple of top people from, from, from Tesla, from who had built and commissioned all the equipment there. That's the key thing. All this equipment has to be commissioned, has to work and so forth. So we, we feel very confident from that standpoint. Our plant's going to cost about $30 million in first that's both awesome. phases, for both phases. Um, a sim and that's 20,000 ton. Uh, people compare us to some of the other companies out there, Redwood and Lifecycle, and, and who are really good companies. They're nice companies, but we're, they're not competitors at this point. This, this market's look at like one half percent of the potential at this point. Well, I would bet we'll all work together going forward to make this better. Um, I don't think I answered your question, though, Chad. No, that was um, that was as good as I think you can give, right? <laughs> but but you, you, you segued into to the next question just to make sure I understood, right? So 30 million for each phase. I, so my- No, no, for both phases. Our whole plant's gonna cost 30 million, be all built to do to 20,000 tons. And that'll take over a 12 month period. Okay. <clears throat> so it's both phases. And I would be glad to share this with you offline. 
take you through no, it. No, I'm just trying to get a, a feel for the economics. And then, you know, so so $30 million to get to 20,000 tons, and then how, how much incremental to get to 100,000? You, you should start two, to get some Two different plants, two different plants. That'd be a brand new plant. This will this will end up being an innovation center at, at, at the end of the day, a big lab. And there'll be all sorts of things that we'll be able to keep up with here. This is only 12 minutes from the Tesla factory, just so you know. Okay. Um, this protect the next plant will be 200,000 tons, employ about 300 people. We'll put it in an opportunity zone uh, in the United States. We've you know we've already identified six great spots already, um, and you know you do that based on the political areas where they where they need the help. We're looking at old army bases around the world to recycle because those are perfect for ha you know handling this material. So, okay, that part's good. So how do you finance the $30 million cost? I mean, we'll do that through a series of some equity that we've brought in and then through a series of debt. Uh, and the SBA is being in nothing but cooperative with us. And you can imagine why. We're employing people, we're green. You know, it's, it's, a, perfect, it's a perfect scenario. So the SBA money is very, very, uh, it's like getting free money at this point. It's, it's 25 year fix, two and a half percent. It's wonderful. And they're really there to help us. So, but they're not gonna build our bigger plants. We'll do that through some sort of project financing or working with each individual state, just depending. And that's a policy situation is where that'll get. As, as soon as people see the first plant we're working, the other ones will be easy to do. I think you can you can imagine that. As you kind of break ground on the first one, are you, are you doing we, so? We, we broke ground and we picked our contractor, which we announced this morning, Miles Construction. We got the land. We just got all of our tax incentives uh, from the government of Nevada, which is fantastic. We won't say the number of it. You know the amount, but it's it's very significant, um, and and over the next ten years, so that part's good. I, again, the governor looked me in the eyes and said, "Welcome to Nevada, Doug." So that was that was a nice feeling. But they wanted they just want to help you, you know. It's they've been Nevada. I mean, we've been working this three years though, guys. This isn't something we just started last week. Yeah. So so do you have committed contracts once that plant is operational? For so it's yeah, so the way that would work, so I talked about the five successful things we needed to do to be successful. One is to have the relationships with the U.S. government. The other one was with the cathode people. So the cathode manufact cathode people, the BASS, the Dow Chemicals, the DuPonts, they'll take everything we produce from that plant, not even a question. They'll take everything. They want to see us, the plant up and running. We are in a lab in Cambridge, Massachusetts with Greentown BASF. We've been in that lab for a year and a half. They pay for it all, been very supportive of us. We have set, well, we have four people back there right now. Uh, with COVID and so forth. So they, they will buy everything. The U.S. government will get offtake orders from in the future because they'll buy everything we have in the ground because the U.S. government, just like with oil, they're going to stockpile these materials. They have to. They, gotta, they have to, which is why we're talking army bases. You can start expanding that. This is a much bigger opportunity than I ever thought it was going to be, you know, two, three years ago. Yeah. Normally in situations like this, you would see a DuPont or one of the other guys that you mentioned take an equity stake in this first plan. So, kind of so watch the press. Okay. Yeah. We've got a lot of great things coming. We'll, you know, we'll start talking to you about all of our relationships, but yeah, just, I yeah. Think that'll be click clearly seven people from Tesla is pretty nice, but getting a commitment from an entity like that, I think is the conviction. You know, there's, a, I can go get, we can go get offtake agreements. Um, we can get MOUs for offtake agreements, but they're only good till you start producing. Yeah. They're all, they all have their outs in them. So, but the market, you know, the stock market wants me to put that out. So it pumps the stock. Right. But I'm, well, this is a, guys, this is a long-term deal. This is a dividend producing company. If we actually, if we do it correctly. Yeah, no, where I was going with that is if if they do put an equity stake in, I, I think that they'll do so after a fair amount of due diligence on this plant and, and your ability to do it, right? And, and so not not to goose the stock, but just as a, you know, kind of an independent third party stamp of approval on, on the process. Um, so. so so what happened was, and, and I didn't explain this, but uh, over a year and a half ago, we entered a contest, contest with BASF. And that was to develop uh, recycling of these type of batteries in, in, in the world. 250 companies uh, got involved on it. We won the whole thing. They've been total supports. They've been validating us day in and day out. We're in their lab, which is a process and analytical lab. So it's, it's great. But they want to see the plant running. They'd love to have it up six months ago because they'd be feeding us with everything. And I think we're getting cut off. Yes, we're getting close to the end of time. Thank you so much, Doug. I was with Doug with American Battery Metals. And thank you to everyone joining. You, Doug. See you in the Thanks next so session. Much. Reach out anytime, guys. Just call me independently. Feel free to get a hold of me, guys, anytime. Yeah.
We're full transparency and I need help. So thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Goodbye.